and welcome to the Den of Doom. Today we're going to do four times six minutes with 90 seconds recovery. Hopefully you're ready for this. And pedaling away, we're going to press do workout. And in three, two, one, start pedaling. Okay, off we go. So nice warm up. <coughs> We've got 15 minute warm up. <coughs> I think I said 10 minutes earlier. I do apologise have a little tissue today. <laughs> it seems to have turned into a little, a little scrumpled up piece of paper. Okay, hopefully you're all well. Sending you love. Don't forget, if you haven't already, you can subscribe to this on YouTube channel. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit this morning about the importance of having a nice strong core. Hiya Craig, fabulous. Now then, I'm reading an article in the Peak Performance. Really good. I've actually cancelled my 220 because I found it was just repetitive. I kept telling you the same old thing year after year. We've actually probably been getting it for the last 20 years or 30 years. Um, Tom reads it now, I've given up. So I've cancelled that and I've got a subscription on Peak Performance, which is more scientific and gives lots of articles. And one thing the articles I was looking at this morning was about the importance of that core. And they've done research to show how much energy is lost at different cadences with utilising sort of that, the core to help you do the work. So if you are somebody who cycles with a lower cadence generally, what you want to be looking for is a stronger core because the slower your cadence, the more you're engaging it and therefore if you're engaging the core, you're using more energy, you're using it for power. <coughs> So, if you're not already, make sure you're focusing on really improving those core muscles. The more stability we have in the core, the less energy we waste. And hopefully, you've been doing my conditioning series, weeks one to five, found on YouTube. I've been doing them, and Poppy's even commented that my six pack is starting to improve, so I'm quite pleased about that. Always trust Poppy. <laughs> Even though she wants lots of things for Christmas, she could be embellishing that. <coughs> okay, so nice easy spin in. Go to work, way through the gears. So hopefully you're on a super easy gear at the moment, because we're going to get a little bit progressively harder. After the first five minutes, just change with me. And that's it. <coughs> oh, it seems to be frozen. Oh, maybe it was just me. I look like it's frozen then. On the screen. Morning, Bob. Congratulations to Bob, Mark and Graham, who all completed the beast. 400 and something miles of running in a month. <coughs> We're finishing off with the last four days of over marathon distance each day. Absolutely phenomenal effort. And a big shout really to Graham, who, no, <laughs> dog's trying to get <laughs> behind me, who hadn't actually done a great deal of endurance training prior to this. Up in there. absolutely amazing. Hopefully all your limbs are intact, all your joints are still working, a little bit of oil might be required, and not of the alcoholic kind. <laughs> Mark, Graham, I know what your celebrations are probably like. So, for you guys, what I'd recommend is just some nice easy biking. Take the load off those joints for a couple of weeks before we return to serious running. Bob, are you doing what you said you are going to do? Are you going to work back down that ladder? Hats off to you if you are. I did do a little video footage of them. And unfortunately, being me, we saved it into a file. The computer didn't say anything about there not being that file there anymore. And that file has just disappeared. It might be on my computer somewhere. Oh, I cannot find 
other files with all the information on. Okay. <clears throat> Fantastic. Okay, I'm just going to go a harder gear now. In three, two, one. Up we go, one gear harder. So I'm hoping you all have a fabulous weekend. Weather Saturday, not so great. Sunday, yeah, yesterday was stunning. So, instead of swimming this year, because of the pools and the COVID and all the rest of it, I mean, I will get in for a few swims. I'm not stressing about it, but then again, I don't really race anymore. I just play. I went surfing instead. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, so excited. So, <laughs> week one, I had a lesson. Week two, a few of the others couldn't make it, so I went in for a surf yesterday. I was in the water for about an hour and a half, two hours. Okay, there's not endurance paddling going on with those arms. There's definitely some high intensity interval training going on, trying to catch those waves. So absolutely brilliant fun. So if you are, you know, concerned about not being able to get in the pool, so why not try a spot for surfing? will really build your strength. The shoulders are aching a little again today. Then I did a few press ups last week as well, Friday <laughs> and Saturday. I'm trying to do the 20 press ups a day challenge again, which I did quite a long time ago. It's a personal challenge. Perhaps I should broadcast it and then maybe I'll stick to it. So three times a week I'm trying to do my core work, keep that conditioning, and I've been doing press-ups. We also did a nice 10 mile run on the coast path on Saturday. And I have to say, Gus, did you work with us, Heather? You'd have loved it. But what was so brilliant was the fact it felt so much easier eight weeks later than it did the first week. I'm slightly high for coming, <laughs> coming home. <laughs> but it was just brilliant to feel like 10 miles of really rough terrain was relatively easy. I'm not saying those hills were. And I'm not saying that my bottom is aching from trying to sprint up those hills. But I ran up hills that I normally would have to walk on. So very happy with that. so good to see the games. I'm just curious of what I'd be like on the road on the bike now. I haven't been on the road for ages. <laughs> I'm literally only getting in the two bikes that you're seeing every week. Coupled with possibly two, maybe three runs. Hopefully a surf every week now. And we'll see how we go. Just feeling better, feeling healthier, feeling fitter. So good. So this session is 50 minutes long. <coughs> Again, if you want to do the core stuff, make sure you visit the channel on YouTube. There will be some more advanced ones coming. Hence me doing it three times a week. So <laughs> when I get around to filming it, I can actually do it. And maybe capturing for all three efforts. I've got to be honest, one of my biggest problems is that the stomach is holding my head up <laughs> for that length of time. So I'm just basically doing 10 minute efforts where you don't stop, you just change from one to the other. They will be revealed very soon. <coughs> I've got a few of you watching today, which is fantastic. Maybe it's the new lighting. Da, 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 da. Like I say, I'm hoping it's whiting out all my wrinkles, making me look like a 21 year old, <laughs> and drawing in the viewers. We live in it. The dogs are just snoring, like, yeah, whatever. Okay, we've got 30, well, 25 seconds. And we're just going to go up one gear again. So it's three increases in the warm-up. 
And as we are, people are working harder each time you change the gear. For those of you on Zwift, <laughs> thank you. Brenda says they do look 21. Thanks. <laughs> In fact, well, it's funny actually, yesterday, Poppy, clearing my dad's house out again. I'm going to be there forever, I think. And uh, I bought some photos of me home when I was 26. And Poppy thinks I look the same 26 as I do now. <clears throat> the only difference was the creases in the forehead. So they're the worry lines, except from having you. <laughs> yeah, so three increases of five minutes. That's it. Oh, the increase then, sorry, I got distracted by Brenda being kind to me. <laughs> Hopefully you've gone up. So we've got four minutes at this effort. Remember, super easy for the warm-up, flushing out anything you did at the weekend. Even if it's boozing, flushing out the alcohol, getting ready for a harder effort. And if you're talking ready to proceed exertion, because you haven't got all the fancy gubbins, which I must stress you do not need. And to a certain extent, people without the fancy gubbins, you're going to be in a slightly stronger position if you decide to race, because what if your power meter breaks? What if your battery runs out on your watch halfway through the race? Freya, we talked about it, didn't we? You need to be in tune with your body. You need to know how you feel and when you're working too hard. And you only get that with practice. So the warm up, in about three or four or five maybe. The effort we're going to do, we'll start off at perhaps a six, <clears throat> which by the end of it will become that seven. So we're just touching the threshold, which is when your body can't get rid of the lactic acid quick enough to keep you working aerobically. We're always producing lactic acid. But it's when we produce it in excess that it becomes an issue and the acidity of the blood changes and creates a hostile environment for those legs or arms. Two and a half minutes of the warm up left and then we're straight into a six minute effort. Good. Have to blow the nose. Come off. Oh, the sea water thing. I was actually quite impressed with myself yesterday. I don't think I got my hair wet for the first half an hour, which means I didn't fall in. <laughs> Caught the wave. Jumped off in the shadows. Fantastic. Awesome, well done. Minute and a half left. We're going to try and keep our cadence up around the 80 90 because you use less energy. The lower the cadence, the more energy that is used from the core. Peak performance, Andrew Hamilton if you're interested in signing up to those newsletters. <clears throat> We're going to try and maintain the same cadence. Be careful with your selection of your gearing. What feels easy at the beginning does not always feel easy at the end of the effort. Yet. 
So the first one will be hard, and then hopefully <laughs> the next three will feel amazing. Okay, five, three, two, one. Select your gear. I'm going to have a little look at where I am because I am using the power. I got the power. There we go.
So I'm on my seven now. A little bit harder. Minute and ten left. Think that is the question. Um, no, we'll go for the 90 then. <laughs> so I'm going to go in, go in to so ignore my watch for a moment, and we're going to go past by 30 seconds. So we have 90 seconds rest, stick with the plan. Modern technology, what did I tell you? Yeah, same effort going for all sets. So six to seven. <clears throat> so we've got 20 seconds left and then we go again for an RP of six or seven. Nice and easy. Going in five, three, two, one, up we go. So six minutes, off we go. Same gear, same cadence that you were achieving before. to mathematical calculations.
Good. Three and a half minutes left. Well done. Sweat's coming off now. Hit your target. Ready count and count. Twenty-three again. Well done, everybody. Keep it smooth, keep it regular, keep focused. Two and a half minutes left, coming up.
make sure you recover to enable the power or the effort to be the same for the next one. Going up in three, two, one, up we go. Six minutes, it's nice and hard. Okay, let's keep it good, keep it smooth. Anything under 80, remember, requires more energy because you're utilizing your core more than your legs. Check the gear. What were you on last time? What are you on now? If you can hold the same gear throughout, that's absolutely phenomenal. Oh, Mr. Edwards is on as well. I did give you a shout earlier, boys. Very proud of you. I think Tom's been in touch. Check your messages. Probably have been inundated. First minute in. Have a drink if you haven't already. Good. Well done. <coughs> We're going to do a count at four minutes. We've got four minutes to go. That's in ten seconds. Counting in. Three, two, one, and count. Well done. Hopefully you're with me, guys. In mind, if not body. <laughs> well done. Halfway. Just a third effort. Counting again. For two minutes to go. In two, one, and count.
Well done. Keep it going there. So you only need that focus. Last minute.
Ladies are feeling it. Come on, we can do this together. Less than that, one and a half left. Good. You've done this in aero. Extra bonus points. Well done. Last minute coming up. Should we do a count? Okay, let's count. higher than it should be. So if you're doing something like an Ironman, when you start, your RPE should be like four or five. Nowhere near a seven. You've got hmm, so from nine hours to 16 hours of increasing RPE, probably the best way to put that. Because what starts off easy doesn't always finish up that way. Particularly if there's a nice little marathon at the end of it. I was telling Freya on Saturday on the run, 
Okay, don't give away your best efforts in training. Stay consistent. Don't get overexcited. I brace people in Ironman, but in training, for blowing me out of the water. Psychologically, it does play with your head and you think you need to be going faster. RPE is rate of perceived exertion. So how hard you feel it is. So seven, it's on a scale of one to 10. I mean, one is basically sitting on the sofa. <laughs> seven is where you are at what's called threshold. So you're starting to breathe more heavily because you're trying to get rid of the carbon dioxide buildup and the lactic acid. But what happens at seven to eight is you can't quite get rid of that lactic acid. So you start to feel the muscles, well, it's the burn, I suppose people call it, but they're starting to fatigue. Um, so seven, eight, your threshold slash slightly above. If you go nine, 10, I wouldn't be able to speak. So if you notice on some of the hit sessions, you don't get me chattering because I can't. Nine and 10 is grunting at you. <laughs> so I say with regards to training, some people will train really hard and then come race day, they just can't maintain that pace. So on race day, it plays with their heads and I go past them. So I think for the first Ironman I did, need to look back, but I didn't really exceed 14 mile an hour average on any of my rides, even the short ones, because the short ones are meant to be recovery. But once I tapered, I got about 17 mile an hour average. So I tapered, that's when the adaptations take place. You regain your strength and your stamina. You focus on how you feel, so rate of perceived exertion, and you take the day easy. Now for the first one, I had no concept of how far I was going to go before I collapsed in a heap. And what happened was I took it easy on the bike. And I mean far easier than I would if I was chasing a time. But I got off that bike, I run, I ran a 335 marathon, which it's absolutely crazy when you think about it. Um, my best is 325. Not that I've done many marathons standalone, uh, but I was able to get off and run a 335 because I took the bike relatively easy. That day, and it wasn't an easy day, it was a, one of Wales' uh, interesting four seasons in a day day. Not as bad as 2013, but 2012. And I... Yeah, did it in 12.04, which I was absolutely ecstatic about, coming in fifth place. And the following year, it was a little bit harder. This is where I did very little training. Um, I think I rode my bike on a Wednesday with a client, and I was working over in St. Florence on a Friday, so occasionally, not every week, I would cycle over there and back if the weather was good. So I was probably getting two bike rides in a week, maybe one run, no swims. So, yeah, oh dear, the no swims. I did put on a few pounds, nothing major again, but I went from eight, eight stone four to probably eight stone 10. When you're a bit short, I suppose that is quite a lot. And my wetsuit wouldn't fit me <laughs> come race day. So I had to wear a really old one that Tom mended with a tire in the tube. Uh, finished that one in 13 hours. So what amazes me is the amount from a week, a year when I did lots of training, a year doing very little training. It was only an hour and 10 minutes difference. <clears throat> but what it is, it's mental state. If you blast it, unfortunately, you're not going to get off that bike and run well. So you look at a lot of people's marathon times and they're not brilliant. You do need to learn to run well and you need to be conservative on the bike. You've got to get the strength on the bike, of course you do, so that we all conservative is still quite fast. But yeah, do not kill yourself. Pacing, don't look at people's times on Strava, don't look at their power output. So I work to power and I work to rate of perceived exertion. Heart rate I keep on for a guide to see just how to look back. Is my heart rate lower at a certain intensity? If it is, and I I know things are going well. 
Does my heart rate stay elevated for a number of days? If it does, possibly I'm tired and I need a break. <laughs> but uh, you're welcome, Brenda. I'll see you on Wednesday, hopefully. Take care now. And uh, so, yeah, so I do monitor all those three variables. I tend not to race to power, in fact. I have taken the power meter off to race um, because I like to go on field. I don't want to be panicking about not hitting a target. And I like calculating. I look at my speed, of course I do. We are very lucky here in Pembrokeshire, though, with regards to the Ironman course, because we can practice it, practice it, practice it, so we get an idea of what pace we will be doing over that course on a particular day. I mean, power is great because it's a windy day, then you know you can ease off going into, the, into it, but you can do that with speed. We get the winds to practice as well. Okay, going really well now. The old undercarriage is... <laughs> A wee bit achy, but we're going to finish in just 10 seconds. It's a 50 minute effort today. I'd like to say thank you to listening to Claire's ramblings and joining me for the session. I'm just going to stop the clock now. Make sure you go onto YouTube, do the stretches. I'm renewing all the stretches. I know some of them are very poor because they were done on my phone back in the start of lockdown. Thanks once again for joining me in the Den of Doom. Hope to see you very soon. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, like, and comment below.